Okay, you want to create a search box in Microsoft Excel. So here's my example. I can select whether I want to do a contained search or a begin search. And I can also specify the column I want to perform the search in. So for example, if I type to J in here, it will return all of the first names that contain a J. But I could say, well, let's only return the first names that begin with a J. I could change the column that I'm performing the search on. So let's say Joan. And if I said contains, you could see it includes the additional record. Okay, let's see how this can be done. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is show the developer tab on your ribbon. If you can't see it, just right click on one of the other tabs, go to customize the ribbon and make sure developer is ticked here. So on the developer tab, you want to go to this insert button and then under ActiveX controls, you're going to select this text box control, click on that and then draw a text box. You then need to go up to properties and we need to link this text box to a cell. So whatever we input into the text box appears in a particular cell. Now I'm going to say that's P1. So I've typed P1 into that little box and press enter. To enable typing into this text box, I need to turn design mode off. So I'm going to click on this design mode button. Then I'm going to type something in and you can see that that value now appears in P1. Now you could leave the appearance of the search box as it is, or you can add some design elements to it. So if you want to do that, go to insert shapes, and then you want to look for this rounded corner rectangle and you can draw a rectangle over your search box. Then you need to right click on the rectangle, center back, and then you can change the background color if you want to. So on the shape format tab, you've got your shape fill drop down, and I'm going to select white as my background. What I would then do is go back to insert shapes and select this shape here. Top corners rounded, draw that. And then if you rotate it so that the rounded edges are on the right of the shape, you can then drag it up into your existing shape and then resize it. Then you could put a little magnifying glass into that shape. So if you go to insert icons, and just type search in that search bar. That'll do, insert that. And then I could change the color of that shape to white, drag it into position, resize it. Okay, we've got a basic search bar. Now we're gonna to have to write a formula to return the relevant records based on whatever we type into the search bar. Now, before we do that, we're going to put this data in a table. Now, the way to do that is to click into it and then go to insert table and click on OK. You can then remove any of the table's formatting by going to this little drop down and then going to clear. You then want to give the table a name so I'm going to call this contact list and press enter to store the name. Now, the reason I'm putting the data in a table is one, it's easy to refer to within a formula, but also it creates a dynamic range. So if I add new records to this database, the formulas that I'm going to write will automatically pick up those new records. Now, having done that, I'm then going to copy these column headings over into the search results area. Let's just put some text in this search box. And remember the text is linked to cell P1, right? Now, the first function we're gonna use within our formula is the search function. Now, what search does is return the numeric position of a text string within another text string. So for example, if I said find text in P1, comma, within these first names, 
and then I close the bracket and press enter. You can see wherever it finds a J, somewhere within the text, it returns the position of that J. Now we're not so much interested in the position of the J, but we are interested in the fact that the formula has returned a number. That tells us that there's a J somewhere within the text. So what I'm going to do now is run a test to see whether or not the search function is returning a number. And I can do that using the is number function. So I'm just putting that search formula within is number. And you can see that that returns true where there was a number and false where there wasn't. Now, why am I doing this? Because I can then use this logical test within the filter function. So if I put this within filter, my array is the database that I want to return. So my entire contact list comma, include has to be a logical test specifying which records to return within that array. So that's why we created a logical test here using the is number and search functions, comma. Is empty is a useful argument. You can specify what you want to return if no records met your include criteria. So I'm just going to say nothing found here. And that's in quotation marks because it's a text value. So if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see now that it's returning those results. So if I typed E, it would return all of the first names that contain an E. If I typed in two letters, it would do the same thing. Now returning any first name that contains J and O. So that's how we set up a contains search criteria. Now what I'm going to do is just move that formula over here. We'll use that later on. I want to now look at how to do a begins with search criteria. Now the first function we're going to use for this is called left. Now what left does is extract a specified number of characters from the left side of a text string. So for example, if I took a two, the name John, and said I wanted to return three characters, it would return J-O-H. Now what I actually want to do is check whether the value held in P1 is equal to the result of the left function. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get this number of characters to always be the same number of characters as the value in P1. Now the way I do that is I use the len function. So len returns the number of characters in a specified text string. So you can see that now, because this text string contains two characters, the result of my left function returns two characters. If I change this to one character in the search box, it now returns one character with the left function. Now essentially what I want to do is say, is that result of the left function equal to what I've typed? in the search box. Now I don't just want to check one of those names, I want to check all of them. And you can see I'm now getting my trues and my falses for all of the first names. So I would then put this within the filter function. My array is the entire data set. Include uses my left function and my if empty is nothing found here. You can see it's gradually reducing the number of results as I continue to type my name in the search box. Now eventually what we're going to do is combine these two formulas into one formula, but we need the ability within our search box to specify whether we want to do a contains search or a begins with search. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back to the developer tab. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to use this option button. I'm going to click down here and I'm going to type contains. Now if you need to move it, right click on it and then left click and drag. And I'm going to add another 
option button. And this is going to be starts with. Now you need to right click on the first options button, go to format control. Make sure you're on the control tab and make sure that the value is checked and you need to link it to a cell. So I'm going to link it to P2, click on OK. So now if I select contain, can you see that I get a one in P2? And if I select starts with, can you see I get a two in P2? So essentially if P2 contains a one, I want to perform this formula. It does a contains filter. But if it contains a two, I want it to run this formula that does a begins with filter. Now the way I'm going to do this is with the choose function. And if you haven't used the choose function, I'll just explain how it works. So your index number, you would link to the output of your options button. And I'll just give you a simple example to begin with. Let's say my value one was goat and the value two was pig. You can see now that with starts with selected, which gives me a value of two here, I get a pig. But if I select it contains, I get a goat. Now let's move this formula down here. And I'm going to go up to this second formula we created and I'm going to copy this include criteria, control C. Then I'm going to go into my original formula and I'm looking at this include argument. Now that include logical test needs to change based on the value in P2. So the include argument is actually going to use the choose function. The index number is in P2, comma. So value one is the contains logical test, which I've already got there. And value two, so I'll put a comma in after that, close bracket, is going to be my starts with criteria. So then I need to close the bracket for choose and then press enter. So now this formula will basically respond to whatever I select up here. So if I get rid of that version of the formula, and drag this into position, let's say, we have a J as our criteria. Contains at the moment includes Benjamin, but if I say starts with, it excludes Benjamin. Now at the moment, the criteria always applies to the same column, to the first name column. Say we wanted to apply the criteria to different columns. Well, what we could do is have a drop down list where we select the column we want to apply our criteria to. Now to put a drop down list in your search bar, go back up to the insert button. This is on the developer tab and under form controls, use the combo box. And I'm going to draw a combo box here. Then what we need to do is click somewhere over here in this area, which we can eventually hide by the way. And we need to transpose the column headings. So I'm going to use the transpose function for that. So that they appear in one column. We can then right click on our combo box, go to format control. And our input range is going to be our list of column headings. And the cell link, I'm going to make P3. Click on OK. So now if I select a field name from this drop down list, can you see it returns the position of that field name in P3? Okay, so next I need to introduce you to the index function. You may have used this before. And there are two versions of it. We're using the array version. Now our array is going to be the entire data set. Row number we're going to leave as blank. The column number, so the position of the column that we want to return values from, is going to be specified in P3. Close the bracket and press enter. Now with index, because we left the row number blank, it returns the entire column. 
So if I change this field name to last name, you can see it's now returning the last names, first name, it then returns the first names. So what we need to do is take this formula and copy it, go back to the formula we have up here, and wherever we're referring to the first name column, we need to replace that with the index function. So for example, here, and here. Press enter. Now I can get rid of the index function down here. So let's see if this works. At the moment, the criteria is being applied to the first name column. Let's see if we can apply it to the last name column. Let's see how that works. Now, one little tweak you are going to need to make. If I delete the criteria from the search box, you notice that it actually returns all of the records. Now, that's probably not what you want. Now, to get around this, what you need to do is go back to your formula and put the current formula within an if statement. And in the logical test argument, you're going to say, is P1 equal to an empty text string? Comma. If true, you want to return the following text, and this goes in quotation marks. Please supply a search criteria in the search bar or search box. Comma. Your value of false will be the filter function, and you'll need another close bracket at the end of your formula. So now I just get that message rather than all of the data. It'll still work. If I type in my criteria, it returns the relevant records. All these workings up here can be hidden, so you could either hide the columns, or you could just format the cells with a white font. One thing before I finish the video, because we are using these controls, you're going to need to save the workbook as a macro enabled workbook. Now to do that, if you don't know, you go to file, and when you go to save, you need to make sure that your file type is macro enabled workbook with the file extension .xlsm. Do not save it as a normal Excel workbook. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.